Hi everyone, welcome to the tutorials on introductory Python for image processing and this is brought to you by the Appear team at Zeiss. And I request you to sign up for your free account at appear.com, A-P-E-E-R.com and explore the machine learning tools. You may not need to code anything, it's always a great thing to know how to code, but there are a lot of tools for deep learning, semantic and uh, instant segmentation on appear.com, so please check it out. Now, in this video, I'm gonna focus on a topic that quite a few of you requested, so I thought I should just record a video on this topic, which is detecting straight lines in images, and a couple of you asked me about how to measure angles between these straight lines once you detect them. So I'm gonna address or focus this video on this topic, and for detecting the straight lines, we are going to use Huff transform and let me provide a quick introduction on what it is and then let's jump into python to write a few lines of code and most of the code is based on the the documentation provided by scikit image but uh, again i'll let you go ahead and explore that but let's jump in so first of all what is huff transform well if you have a straight line let's say in this coordinate space you have x on the uh, you know x axis and y uh, and then you draw a straight line Typically, we represent this or we parameterize this using a uh, an equation like this, right? Y equals mx plus b, where m represents the slope, right? Is it positive, negative? In this case, uh, it's negative. And b represents the intercept, right, on the uh, y-axis right there. Now, uh, nothing wrong with this except, let's say, m goes to infinity for vertical lines. And sometimes it's, uh, it can be useful to represent this in a different parametric space. So that's exactly where Huff transform is. So uh, this exact same line can also be represented using r and theta, OK? r stands for, look at the exact straight line. r stands for the distance to this line, right? the closest distance to this line from a reference point. In this case, the reference point is the origin. And remember this, this reference point sometimes is on the top left corner, depending upon the library that you use. In scikit image, I believe it is on the top left corner. But the point here is there is a reference uh, uh, point, in this case, the origin, from origin to the closest point of the line, which basically means the perpendicular line you know, the, uh, from here. So that's the distance, r. And theta is the angle it subtends with the x-axis in this example, okay? So this line can easily be represented by just two parameters, r and theta, okay? So now what, what, why are we doing this? r and theta corresponds to the half space representation of this line. Now, let's see how we can calculate this and how the scikit uh, image half transform can be calculated. Let's just put these three lines that, uh, I mean, sorry, data points that obviously are forming a line, right? So now we are trying to find out what is that line that actually best represents these three data points. In reality, we'll probably do 100, 200 data points along a line to detect it. Again, hopefully things make sense once we get into that next level. First of all, let's take the first point and then you can draw infinite lines that goes through this point, right? So let's just say, okay, I wanna draw 100 lines. Okay, so you draw a first line and then you look at from the origin to this line perpendicular, let's say some units, my radius or the distance equals to 175 and the angle here is 15 degrees. Okay, then you draw another line. Obviously this line better fits these three points, but that's, that's not the point right now. So this is just right there and then you calculate uh, uh, R and theta. For, for, for that line. And then you draw another line. We don't know at this point which one. Visibly, we can see that, okay, the blue line is the best one, but, math, uh, but, but computationally, we don't know that yet. So you keep generating this R and theta for various lines going through, and you repeat this for all of these data points, okay? So uh, this is an image from uh, Wikipedia. If you search for half uh, transform, you'll get a lot more information, so I encourage you to go there and read about it. But just to summarize it, this is the first example I just showed you, okay? First data point, draw all the lines. How many of our lines? Okay, the second data point do exactly the same. Okay, so if these lines correspond to your theta equals to 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, uh, go ahead and do that for this data point and do that for the last data point. So all the data points that represent the straight line, you're generating uh, a whole bunch of these, uh, you know, other 
uh, lines that and then you're calculating r and theta i hope that makes sense again please read the wikipedia or any other material to get even more information so eventually our goal is for every data point to come up with a possible theta values and corresponding r values for a given theta what is the r for a given theta what is the r for the uh, next line and so on so we do that for all of these and what represents these three data points well wherever you have the same r value right there you see in this case these are all very similar that tells us that okay all points lie close to this blue line that is represented here so this is how we kind of find out if that doesn't make sense let's go to the next image and hopefully this kind of makes sense when you do all of this when you actually convert this from xy space to angle and dis distance space for all the lines in your image then you'll see these type of peaks in this case, this peak represents line number one. This peak represents line number two. This is in the half space. You see, angle versus distance. So that's it. So if you convert your image or the lines into half space, then all you need to do is identify the peaks. So the peak, in this case, the half peak is right there. Now I can say what exactly the angle is and what is the distance. So now I have my angle. Now, if you want to find out the angles between these uh, multiple lines, all you need to do is uh, uh, subtract this from that, and then it tells you the angle from these two lines. Otherwise, this angle is with respect to a reference frame. Okay, so that's the point here. So now let's actually jump into the code and see uh, the few lines of code. And I did add a lot of uh, 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 notes here so you can actually go through at your own pace and again this can be this file can be downloaded from the github page go ahead and look at the link underneath in the description but uh, so for this image i just google searched i mean uh, we'll be working with two images one that's i just literally google searched right now and downloaded this and uh, it's okay if it has some text on it because our half transform is designed to detect lines so it's I hope ignores these curves and only detects the lines and I like this image because it tells me what the answer is 43 degrees in this example it can also report this this angle right the uh, angle between these two lines can be represented by this or this it doesn't matter 180 minus that equals to this so we'll go through this uh, methodically okay so what library are we going to use we are going to use scikit image uh, line half transform and again uh, if you go to the documentation they'll give a bit more information over there but let's come down here we are importing the first line is from scikit image transform i'm going to import two uh, uh, functions here one is half line the other one is half line peaks the first one calculates this half space the second one identifies the peaks in that half space okay so we need these two the other ones are pretty straightforward numpy opencv and matplotlib so let's go ahead and run these lines for now and then let's import this image i just downloaded that so let's import this image okay and if you remember this i mean let's go back this image has a bright background and then these lines are a bit dark and I realized that the scikit image half transform works best if you have dark background so I chose to invert the image and again how do you invert this numpy array you just put that tilde over there so I'm uh, inverting it so all my 255s are 0 and then zeros are 255 that's exactly what that does so let's go ahead and look at the image okay so now when I plot it you can see how my image is inverted it doesn't have the bright background anywhere anymore if you're interested we can go back and then convert them I mean go back to the original image and see how half transform can get confused okay or you can do that at your own time so so far all we have done is loaded the image and just looking at it so now let's actually create all the uh, uh, you know angles where we are trying to extract these uh, uh, half space so let's go back so now what we are talking about is defining these angles like 15 30 45 60 75 so we can calculate r or distance at each of these angles so what angles let's go from minus uh, pi over 2 to pi over 2 and then generate 180 numbers between these so when we do that our test angles you can actually see are going from minus 1.7 remember pi is 3.14159 this is in radians and minus pi over 2 all the way to pi over 2 okay so now that we have this let's go ahead and apply our half line remember the one that we just imported onto our image with these angles if you don't provide any tested angles here I, I still believe it's going to generate 180 
different uh, numbers, but I like to control this. I recommend you to do that. So let's provide the tested angles as, uh, uh, as an array, okay, to, to this. So when you apply Huffline onto your image, then it's going to output three, three things. One is the Huff space values. The next one is theta that we are supplying, which is basically tested angles, and then the distance corresponding to each of that. So let's go ahead and apply this and look at uh, the output. So here is the half space. We have 1060 uh, by uh, 180, 180 because we have 180 theta values, okay? And theta, theta should be 180, and our theta should be equal to tested angles because that's what we are defining. If we, if you haven't defined this tested, then of course it's very important to have these values. And then the distance is what it calculated, right? I mean, distance is uh, one of the parameters that it's going to give us. So here is the uh, the distance. Okay. So what do we do with that? First of all, let's go ahead and look at the half space for these uh, for these uh, uh, data points. And remember, we have 1,060 half space data points, so we have 1,060 uh, distance values corresponding distance values. So let's go ahead and run this and here is the plot. I wish I could zoom in. You can see one peak right there, another peak right here, representing the two lines that we have. And this is going from 0 to 180 and we could have gone to 0 to 360, I mean sorry, 360 different uh, numbers. In that case uh, this would be just expanded. But either way, you see a peak right there, you see a peak right here. So now we have to extract where those peaks are. That's it, that should give us the angle and other information we are looking for. Okay, how do we do that? First, let's uh, apply this half line peaks, okay? This is where it identifies the peaks and we are going to apply this onto our half space, okay? And theta and the distance that, uh, uh, that just got generated. And let's capture those as H, Q, and D, the outputs. And now we should see, we have two lines, so we should see an array of two for each of this. So if we go back up here, you see H is an array of size two, and the values are 479 and 469. The Q, which is uh, our angles, these are the ones we are interested in. Uh, again, 1.16, negative 1.21. These are the angles of the two lines with respect to a reference frame. So if you subtract one from the other, it gives you the angle between these two lines, right? So uh, we'll get to that in a second. And H is, uh, and D is just the distance. Again, you have these two. Okay, now before moving on, uh, let's go ahead and plot these. One, the only thing I'd like to focus on, again, most of this is just for plotting. What is the axis title and everything? The only thing I would like you to focus on is when we apply this half line peaks, okay? I'm, I'm basically redoing this. Okay, I'm basically redoing this and capturing every detail uh, and then plotting it. And not just plotting, I'm actually uh, appending these angles. So at the end of this, we'll actually get a uh, list of these angles. Again, uh, I'm just capturing this into a list. That's pretty much it. So let's run these lines so you can see how the lines look like. So what we are trying to do here again is, as you can see, these are this is our original image. These are the two half peaks. And if you look here, the red is the overlay of our detected line onto the original image. That matches very, very well, as you can see. So we are detecting the lines. And keep an eye on these curved line and 43. None of that is detected as a straight line. Only the straight lines in your image. So if you have an image, do some sort of an edge detection or uh, some operations where you can enhance these lines and then apply half transform that gives you these lines. It actually, you can overlay it like, like I'm doing here. But let's go ahead and find the angle between these two lines in a second. Uh, so let's go back and uh, look at the angles list, okay? So the angles list is 1.167, negative 1.21. Okay, uh, and this is basically, I, I, I probably didn't need to do that because if you remember, we already have that as a NumPy array right there. Okay, 1.16 and negative 1.21 when we calculated it up here. I just, since we are plotting it, why not just extract those? Now, these angles in the angle list are in radians. Let's go ahead and convert them into degrees so it's a bit intuitive for us. So. How do we convert that to, uh, uh, to degrees? One radian is 180 over pi, right? So we are going to just go through each of these. And by the way, the reason I'm 
uh, capturing this as a list is now I can go through each of these elements and then find out the angle between uh, element number one, element number three. In this example, we only have two lines, but what if you have multiple lines? So that's one of the reasons. So let's go ahead and go through each element in this angle list and convert that into uh, degrees. So now we have a list of two again here. So one of the lines is about 66.8 degrees with respect to this origin and the other one is negative 69.88. Okay, so how do you know, uh, get, the, uh, get the angle between these two? Well, in this case, since we only have two, let's just take the maximum and subtract the minimum from this maximum. So when you do that, then the angle difference will come out to 136.759 which is basically this bigger angle. If you want the smaller angle, let's subtract that from 180. So that's exactly what we are doing here. 180 minus angle difference. So when you do that, now that angle difference is 43.24, which is very close to what we have over here, 43, okay? So this is how you can actually uh, apply half transform. So now let's actually go to an image called lines two and let's erase everything and uh, okay let's start with a clean slate i let's also well let's also comment that part because in this case it's already on a dark background which we'll see in a second okay so let's go ahead and run these lines and you'll see that this plot is uh oh, it says unexpected sorry i didn't run all the lines there so let's do this now this is, I literally did this in Microsoft PowerPoint. I just drew a few lines, so I'm not gonna share these images. You can do it yourself. You just draw your own squiggly line. So I did triangle, oval, these lines, and then a hand-drawn line to just to see which one gets, uh, which ones get picked up here, and then just use the snipping tool to just go ahead and save it. Okay, so those are the lines, and let's go ahead and run the entire thing run the entire thing so we can see the final output. So you can see here, it identified a bunch of peaks. I mean, if you can zoom in, you can probably see one, two, three, four, five. In fact, if I go to Variable Explorer, I can see that the list actually has six different things in it, which means it detected six lines, which seems to make sense, right? I mean, in this case, you can see one, two, three, four, five, and uh, you see, you can see those one, two, three, four, five, and uh, six lines over there, okay? Three, three, six lines right here. So for each of these six, let's go back here. And for each of these, you can actually get all the values right here. The angle 90 degrees, you can probably guess what the 90 degrees one is. And the other one is zero degrees right there. So one is 90 degrees, the other one is zero degrees and these three are positive angles, there is one that has negative angle, negative 51. So if you go back, you can see that this is the one that has negative angle, okay? And uh, this is probably 90 degrees because for this library, the origin lies on the top left, like right here. So this horizontal line is 90 degrees and this vertical line is probably the zero degree line and these two and this one, these three are the ones that have, uh, these positive, uh, positive uh, values for angles and the uh, one for negative angle is probably, is this one right there, okay? So I hope this uh, uh, to, you find this tutorial to be very useful. Keep asking questions if we have time and if we can fit these things, we'll definitely answer those. And uh, thank you very much. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel and also please do not forget to sign up for your freeappear.com account and explore the image processing tools we have on the platform. Thank you.